Hey guys, back with another video on Veblen. Um, so, where we are right now. Remember, he looks at society from above and he sees a whole bunch of people who have gained the knowledge in the industrial arts to be able to take care of each other and take care of the group uh, efficiently and cheaply and everything should work out and the fact that it doesn't really upsets Thorstein Veblen. So um, he wants to understand why. And what he finds at first is that uh, the economy has been separated into two spheres, industry, good, business, bad, parasites, wasteful. Um, but it doesn't exactly explain why they got there. We ended the last video talking about Max Weber's book, The Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism. The idea that the spirit of capitalism comes from Calvinism uh, and the idea that you don't know if you're going to heaven, but if you are successful in a material way um, and you still live a virtuous life, it could be God telling you, yeah, you know what, you're in. Um, but what Veblen's describing doesn't sound like that at all. So what happened? Um, Veblen, what it basically comes down to is Veblen believes there is a new spirit of capitalism. He writes about it in a book called The Theory of the Leisure Class. Now, just focus for a second on leisure. There is no leisure in the Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism. Those two books juxtaposed uh, with one another suggest a lot about how capitalism has evolved over the course of the 19th century. Um, so Thorstein Veblen says, basically, we went from capitalism being kind of rooted in this idea of uh, I can, if I'm successful, it can be a sign to me uh, that I am, that I'm going to heaven. And it changes to making money being not about an indication I'm getting into heaven, but making money being about impressing other people. Um, the latter of which sounds a lot more familiar to you and me, which again, Thorstein Veblen's writing about a world that's pretty similar to ours, even though he's writing 120 years earlier. Um, so he says, this is basically his argument, which is going to sound completely uh, reasonable to you because it's going to be the world that we live in. Um, private property, the stuff we uh, own, is the basis of esteem basis of how other people are going to view us. Um, and everyone in society is going to come to want to emulate. Emulation is, uh, Veblen has a couple of, his sort of idea of human nature involves workmanship, emulation, um, the sort of, uh, the sort of bent to parent um, kids. So he takes a kind of an evolutionary uh, biological uh, perspective on human nature. So anyway, emulation comes in there. He says that um, that we seek to emulate the people who are at the top, the, the wealthy. Um, but that also the wealthy, they need to be able to impress other people. And the most obvious way to do that in a modern society where most people are not going to know you is to flaunt your wealth. Um, so he says that he comes up with, I think now is the time, um, well, no, before we get to conspicuous leisure and conspicuous consumption, uh, the idea that whereas for Weber, the way you acquired your wealth through hard work and through reinvesting and not enjoying the fruits of your labor, the way we uh, earn our, our wealth kind of ceases to be important. It's just whether you've got it or you don't have it. Uh, that becomes the crucial thing. And uh, Veblen uses the term, the instinct of workmanship, I told you about emulation as an instinct, workmanship is another instinct for him, is transformed into an effort to outdo others in terms of possession and symbols of economic achievement. Doesn't matter how you earn it, because people aren't going to know that. You live among people that are strangers to you. So all you have to do is be able to show that you've got a lot. Um, he says we do this in a couple of ways. Conspicuous leisure and conspicuous consumption, which both mean essentially exactly what you would think they mean. Conspicuous leisure is ostentatiously not working. 
being able to go on vacations whenever you want, making those vacations someplace exotic that other people would not be able to go to. Um, conspicuous consumption, which you've heard that term before. Um, Veblen's the guy who coins that term. Um, ostentatiously buying things. So you, you buy, you buy the brands that other people can't afford to get. Um, the end uh, result of this is that, is though, this idea, is that the desire for wealth can never be satisfied. Um, because it's not driven by the need to subsist. So we're, we're zooming back out to industry, right? Industry satisfies the need to subsist. We can have cheap goods that everyone can afford and take care of everyone. But according to the theory of the leisure class, we can't have that because I've got to be able to go to the Madeira Islands for my vacation. I've got to be able to afford uh, uh, Mercedes. And in order for those things to happen, it can't be, the economy can't be run on the basis of meeting people's needs. It's got to be run on the basis of making money. Um, as a result, uh, because the, the economy now, and this is him, is driven not by the need to subsist. The struggle is substantially a race for reputability. So my reputation on the basis of invidious comparison. He's saying the entire economy, the separation of industry and business is based on the idea that I want to show off to other people. I want people to think highly of me based on the wealth, based on my um, ability to be wealthy enough to conspicuously consume and conspicuously have leisure. Um, and the problem for us is that the business class runs the show. So what is the solution to this? That's what we're going to get to in our next video. I'll see you then.